So anybody who's not ignorant on the subject or is not a dumb, blind fanboy knows that PC gaming is the best possible way to play video games. Even the majority of informed people who prefer playing on consoles understand that they're missing out on a lot of features that PC gaming has to offer and a lot of benefits. For example, with PC you have constantly upgradable hardware that's at a better price. You don't need to play a pay to play online. You have more control options open to you. You have better visuals. You have better performance. You have more customizability. You have more mods. You have cheaper games. You have almost perfect backwards compatibility with older games. I just got done playing the freaking original Team Fortress. Not Team Fortress Classic, but the original Quake mod from like the mid 90s show me a playstation 4 that you can put a playstation 1 disc in and just play those old games now pcs have pretty much always had these advantages over consoles even back in the 2d days and early 3d days pc has always had these advantages however consoles had specific advantages that pcs couldn't have for example let's go back as recent as the sixth generation the dreamcast ps2 gamecube and xbox if you wanted to play a decent 3D game on your PC, you needed, first of all, you needed a half-decent PC to even do it. That's still the case nowadays, but it was definitely a discrepancy back then, for sure, the price of the hardware versus the games you get. On PC, you had to buy your disc, and you had to install the game on the PC, and then you had to have either disc 1 or disc 2 installed. Microsoft did some extra stuff with, like, product keys and DRM. You had to make sure that your drivers were absolutely perfect, because there wasn't as many easy delivery systems back then for drivers and software. You had to pretty much tweak the game like crazy to yourself. It was just a lot more setup involved in gaming on PC. And the monitor connector was usually different. PC monitors back then usually used VGA, while the PS2, GameCube, Xbox, and Dreamcast all used composite. The Dreamcast did use VGA, but it wasn't as common. But the other systems mostly used composite S-Video and Component, which were separate connectors. Nowadays, PC and consoles use HDMI, and PC also has DisplayPort. So basically, you could only install a certain number of games before your computer's limited hard drive space would run out, and you had to keep the system updated and maintained. And back then, there was no content delivery system or universal online play system like the Xbox, the original Xbox had. Steam didn't come out until the end of the 6th gen, really, or the last two years, and even then it was in its infancy. So PC gaming was pretty convoluted, there was nothing centralized, no centralized standards, you could only have a certain number of games installed at once, and you, there was a lot more maintenance in your hardware, Plus, the discrepancy compared to consoles and PC for the visuals you're getting versus the hardware you pay for was a lot bigger than nowadays. PC hardware was more expensive for the performance back then. Now let's compare that to the consoles. You take the console out of the box, you plug it into your TV, plug your memory card in, plug your controller in, set the date and time on your clock, so maybe set a few TV settings, and you just plop your game in and you get to playing. You didn't have to worry about hard drive space, you did have to worry about save blocks on memory cards, but... The PS2's 8 megabytes cards, the Xbox's 10 gigabyte hard drive, and some of the bigger third-party GameCube cards pretty much meant you never had to worry about running out of any sort of space on these systems. You just had to put your game in, turn the system on, and the game would work. You didn't have to worry about patches after the system after the game was released because of broken games. You just played the games and they worked. That was your living room box. It was the easiest possible way to just play games. So those were distinct advantages. PCs could not keep up with the kind of ease of use the consoles had to offer at the time. Then the 7th gen came along and everything changed. The consoles were still easier to use than PCs and the hardware price discrepancy was still pretty big at the time, but it was starting to shrink. Nvidia and AMD, or ATI at the time, were starting to release more and more advanced graphics cards for better prices on PC, and the consoles were having to stick with older hardware. Plus, with the added system of software updates, post-game release patches, and all this other stuff in these configuration, uh, consoles got more and more complicated and were starting to lose their advantages over what PCs had. You could no longer just take your system out of the box, plug it into your TV, plug your appropriate cables and controllers in, and just play your game. Now you had to wait for system updates, sometimes multiple system updates that would take a long time to complete. Then you would have to wait for game updates and check with DLC and you had to manage your hard drive space. Man, back in the early days of consoles having hard drives, people didn't know what sizes to get because they were so used to their little 4 and 8 megabyte memory cards in their previous gen systems that they didn't think that they would need bigger and bigger hard drives. Combine that with some of the hardware failures from the 6th gen, but that's not really a part of this. Consoles were losing their ease of use and their straightforwardness, and PCs were getting easier. Fast forward to today, and the trend just continues. Now we're starting to get mid-generation updates, such as the PS4 Pro and Project Scorpio. 
Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony aren't releasing their next-gen systems all at once, with Nintendo releasing the Switch pretty soon and that combining console and handheld together into one. And PC hardware has never gotten cheaper, especially with the new AMD Ryzen chips coming out. We have the Polaris and Pascal graphics cards, which offer amazing performance for the price. And now we even have software suites such as GeForce Experience, which configures games for you so that they get the best possible performance, and you don't even have to do anything. So if you're a beginner and you don't want to do too much tweaking, or you just want to get a general idea of where to start from the tweaking, the systems do it for you nowadays. So PC hardware is cheaper. It's very easy to use, and consoles are getting more and more complicated. Now, don't get me wrong, consoles are still easier to use than PCs, but they don't have the advantages they used to have. They don't have the cutting-edge hardware for the great price like consoles used to have. They're nowhere near as straightforward and easy to use. And their game selections and online systems pale in comparison to what the PC has to offer. The difference in ease of use and straightforwardness is no longer an advantage, and even with the consoles being easier, it's not enough of a difference. It's pretty much just you buy less pieces of hardware, and you do a little bit less configuration for a system that stays static in hardware unless you want to buy mid-generation hardware upgrades. You get no price advantage, and you get no game advantage like you did back in the 6th gen. However, consoles nowadays do have one distinct advantage over PC that PC has long since abandoned, but console players just don't want to abandon, and that is true physical media. Now, you can go to the store and buy physical PC games. They're usually on multiple DVDs, and they're really not anywhere near as good as the console physical media, or that system's just not as good. PC physical media exists for people who have shit internet connections or no internet connections, really, who need to install the vast majority of the game from the get-go without having to use an internet connection. Once you use up those discs and the product key that's on the disc package, which usually connects with Steam or Uplay or whoever's making the game, those are done and they're your copies and it's DRM'd, you have no choice. Console physical media is still pretty traditional. There are some differences. For example, nowadays when you buy a game, you have to install it onto your console, otherwise it can't read from the disc fast enough to load all the high-quality assets. But you can still sell that disc to somebody else or give it to somebody else, and it'll still work on their system. It's just that you won't be able to play the game until you get another disc. So the physical media is still pretty standard, while on PC it's not. And this can be a huge advantage for some people. A lot of people like to collect their games and see them on a shelf, and, you know, that's great. It's great that people have that option. And we saw Microsoft try to move away from this system. We saw them try to move over to a more PC-like system when they were releasing the Xbox One, and they were pretty adamant about it, but you saw the kind of backlash they got. Console players aren't ready to move away from traditional physical media, and Nintendo's even moving over to cartridges, so that whole installing system is going to be pretty much gone on that. Combined with that using cartridges, the Switch is going to be the most traditional physical media console, and it's probably going to be the only console I really focus my collection with physical media. On my PS4 and Xbox One, I'm using digital games mostly, unless I could find really cheap physical games, because I just don't like getting up and switching discs and getting up from my seat. I like to sit my lazy ass down and play my games, and if I want to switch a game, I just go to the home menu and change games, just like on my PC. See, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time, but what pushed me over the edge and made me really want to make it was seeing Mr. NoobTube Gamer debate with Fringy and talk about being the console king and taking PC fanboys off their pedestals or whatever. What he's not understanding is that all of the stuff he's listing as quote-unquote console advantages are not really advantages. They're mostly personal preferences. Oh, I like the game that the I like the games that the PS4 offers, so I want to get a PS4. Great. I want a system where I don't want to have to do it as much configuration because I just want to do less configuration, but I acknowledge that the PC is still better. Great. But when you're spewing just blind, stupid fanboy stuff, you're just making yourself look like an idiot. You're not really actually arguing. And I go over this stuff in the comments section every day on YouTube, and people just seem to keep bringing up the same arguments in favor of consoles. But because they weren't able to argue properly, I figured I would make this video, which is basically the actual, true advantage that consoles still have over PCs. So what do you guys think about this? Please leave comments, discuss. I really do like discussion on my videos. I think that physical media should stick around. It's going to be a really sad day when it eventually goes away. But 
I think that if it changes and adapts to the modern world, that physical media could probably stick around for a long time. Nintendo's on the right track. We could go back to cartridges, which means no installing on a hard drive and more durable games because we know discs don't really hold up that well. But we don't, you know, consoles have been synonymous with discs since the Sega Saturn and PlayStation came out. So who knows if they're ever going to move away from that. The Switch is only working so well with cartridges because it's a handheld. Anyways, I'm starving, I'm going to go eat some dinner, and you all have a great rest of your day.